The overruling of the majority judgment that's taken place by the Chief Justice of India. The Chief Justice of India has gone on to say that they disagree with the earlier judgment. Therefore, no immunity on bribery. No immunity to MLAs and MPs in the bribery case is what the Supreme Court has ruled this morning, just minutes ago. Having reserved its judgment on the October 5th, 2023, a seven-judge constitution bench judge. This was headed by the CJ that pronounced its verdict. During the arguments, the centre had submitted that bribery can never be a subject matter of immunity and and a parliamentary privilege is not meant to place a lawmaker above law. So legislators were protected from criminal prosecution for bribes in connection with their speech and votes in parliament and legislative assemblies up until now. The Supreme Court now has changed that and overruled uh, something that took place uh, 25 years ago. And uh, so basically the Chief Justice of India there uh, changing that ruling. Uh, well, now the MPs and MLAs will not be protected as far as bribery is concerned, this is a parliamentary privilege is not meant to place a lawmaker above the law, is what was said in the Supreme Court minutes ago. And the authority of the House to take action for a breach of discipline in relation to the acceptance of a bribe by a member of the legislature exists in distinct spheres. The scope, purpose and consequences of the court exercising jurisdiction in relation to a criminal offence and the authority of the House to discipline its members are different. Ten. The potential of misuse against individual members of the legislature is neither enhanced nor diminished by recognizing the jurisdiction of the court to prosecute a member of the legislature who is alleged to have indulged in an act of bribery. 11. The offense of bribery is agnostic to the performance of the agreed action and crystallizes on the exchange of illegal gratification. It does not matter whether the vote is cast in the agreed direction or if the vote is cast at all. The offence of bribery is complete at the point in time when the legislature, a legislator accepts the bribe. And 12. Well, uh, to get more on this, we have Ashni Dubey, advocate of the Supreme Court, joining us. We also have Pradeep Bhatti, the spokesperson of the Samajwadi Party, with us. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us uh, on the broadcast. Uh, let me just uh, take uh, my first question to Ashwini Dubey regarding uh, the proceedings in court. The Supreme Court has overruled the earlier ruling on immunity, no special protection against bribery in the parliamentary privileges. The Supreme Court says this protection should go. Take us through, uh, you know, the, the arguments uh, uh, that took place in court today yes simply uh, in simple words the mps and mlas who takes money to cast vote to a particular party inside the house are not protected by the law there are two aspects one article 105 of the constitution of india that says that the members of parliament are immune to for any speech given inside the parliament from the prosecution if that violates the law and the second if they take money you remember in 1993 when pimi narsimha was heading the government at that point of time the, his government came in the minority then the shibu soren took money in order to vote and then the cbi case was registered in that case the constitution bench of honorable supreme court has held in by 3-2 that the members of parliament enjoy the immunity. Similarly, here the matter before Honorable Supreme Court was that the Sita Soren, the member of Jharkhand Mukti Morcha, was accused of accepting bribe for vote for a particular candidate in Rajya Sabha election of 2012. Then the CBI filed an official charge sheet against Sita Soren for accepting a bribe for a vote and case was filed in the High Court of Jharkhand. Then in 2014, the Jharkhand High Court dismissed the plea filed by Sita Soren, seeking to quash the criminal proceedings that had been initiated against her, claiming that she enjoyed immunity under Article 194, sub clause 2 of the Constitution, and then that matter was appealed to the Supreme Court. The Honorable Supreme Court, in a significant judgment, very candidly, the seven judges bench of the Honorable Supreme Court overruled the P.V. Narasimha Rao case judgment, says the bribery is not protected under the parliamentary immunity. To P.V. Narasimha Rao case over, was overruled in which five judges bench by 3-2 majority has ruled that Article 105 provides immunity to the members from prosecution in case where the cash or bribery taken to vote. Then Article 105 deals with the members of parliament, 194 members of legislative assembly. 
So Supreme Court's significant uh, the view is the corruption and bribery by legislatures destroy the functioning of Indian parliamentary democracy. And that is what the Honorable Supreme Court overruled that. And the center has also supported this case. If the center's argument, you will say, the, the Honorable Solicitor General is stood up to convey the center's stand. While argument, he says, it is necessary to protect legislatures in the discharge of their legislative and deliberate functions. The act of bribery is a distinct offense and punishable under the Prosecution of uh, Prevention of Corruption Act. So the real issue is not the conscience of the legislative privileges in relation to the parliament or state legislatures. Rather, the question, short question on which the reference was made that whether the offense of bribery is complete outside the legislative house. If the offense is committed outside, no question of parliamentary privilege arises. So that is what the Section 7 of the Prevention of Corruption Act was also uh, the, the referred by honor, uh, the, the Honorable Supreme Court, which said the offense of bribery can be said to be a complete independent of and without reference to anything said or any vote given in parliament or state legislature. So right. no question of the legislative privilege. Yeah, that's right. a very uh, Mr. Dubey, significant... we also have Sunil Prabhu joining us. Uh, you know, uh, Sunil, take us through the crucial arguments leading to the overruling of this judgment after 25 years. Well, I think this is uh, in the fact that the seven-judge bench was overruling it. That was something that was expected. What is important to note is that they've ruled that just like for the president election, just as it is for the vice president election, in the Rajya Sabha election also, there can be no bribery that takes place. So those MLAs who are bribing, being bribed and you know voting in a, a particular manner, uh, they can also be prosecuted. And I think that's uh, the underlining pro uh, provision. That's the big uh, point uh, today uh, because as the Chief Justice of India himself uh, was speaking on behalf of the seven judges say uh, that, uh, you know, taking a bribe by a legislature uh, goes against Indian parliamentary democracy and that in itself is an essence. We must go back to the year 1998 when P.V. Narasimha Rao had just demitted office. There was the famous JMM bribery case which had taken place in 1993 when there was a trust vote at that stage. The video recordings of it was there, but it was never published, uh, pub published at that time. There were key players, many of them uh, today, uh, people like Gulam Nabi Azad and, uh, you know, uh, Virapa Moili, uh, uh, amongst uh, many others who played a key role at that time uh, to help uh, PV Narsama Rao uh, to go through uh, with the razor-thin uh, majority in that trust vote. They needed the JMM uh, MPs uh, to support them. Uh, there was a clear case of uh, bribery that had taken place. But in those days, uh, the then Supreme Court had ruled uh, three is to two uh, favor, uh, saying that uh, you know parliamentarians, what they do on the floor of the House uh, has uh, legal immunity. Uh, today, the seven-judge bench says, no, it is a derivative. If you have taken a bribe, it, there is no immunity. It's an act uh, and, uh, and, and clearly uh, you should be prosecuted. So it's in that uh, context uh, that members of parliament as well as members of legislative assembly will have to watch out that if they do take a bribe and try to do the, like the IR arms and the guy arms that we have seen in recent times, even in a Rajya Sabha election, uh, then they are definitely uh, subject to prosecution. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sunil, uh, for getting us all those uh, details. Uh, we do have uh, Mr. Dubey with us. Uh, we also have Pradeep Bharti, uh, spokesperson of the Samajwadi Party, joining us. Uh, let me uh, take uh, my question to Mr. Bharti regarding uh, this overruling uh, by the Supreme Court earlier, uh, ruling as far as immunity was concerned. There's no special protection now against bribery in parliamentary privileges, is what the Supreme Court has said, that this needs to go and how this was destroying the democratic process. So take us through the significance of this decision and what happens going forward if a person takes bribe? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, we welcome this kind of decisions where bribery is involved or corruption is involved. We always welcome these kind of uh, decisions. But at the same time, when you have the government, uh, BJP government like that, where every uh, opposition party member is being framed uh, in different, different cases, then there has to be some uh, some path or middle path by the government or some instruction by the uh, Honorable Supreme Court regarding uh, framing some uh, opposition leaders. So that has to be also taken care of. We, we, uh, we sincerely support any uh, action taken against any corruption uh, issues or issues related 
that what we have seen in the uh, electoral bond case also where government has uh, decided uh, uh, to bring that kind of bond where which is uh, later on considered as unconstitutional but uh, at the same time there are lot of issues you see in the ed cases 95 plus percentage cases are are on the opposition leaders so this is also be needs to be considered and there has to be some mechanism uh, definitely by the uh, uh, by the constitutional uh, po- by the person sitting on the constitutional position may it be supreme court or any other institution but there has to be with that there has to be some mechanism where election commission also be uh, be uh, fair on, on on when they are dealing with uh, with the opposition leaders as well as when they are, there has to be uh, no, there there should not be any bias cases that what we have seen in the past related to opposition and the and the government uh, the, the ruling uh, ruling party so these things needs to be considered before uh, uh, before we make it a fully compliant uh, well fully compliant uh, institutions those are related those are implementing these things in our constitution so these things has to be considered and i believe we welcome these kind of decisions and we believe we, uh, we we this has to be taken care of in going forward judgment or in in the coming days this is the only uh, thing which uh, opposition parties are concerned of otherwise we have always uh, stood by the supreme court judgment or any constitutional body which which gives any decision in the favor of of the country and uh, strengthen the process of democracy we we always welcome these kind of decisions right uh, let me bring in mr dubey again uh, well uh, you know the purpose uh, was to allow legislators to cast their votes without fear but not to protect them from possible violations of criminal law that is what the corruption is a different case so the the parliamentary privileges before before the law makers and the our constitution uh, makers when when they brought this article 105 and 194 thinking that the parliamentarians and legislators may raise their voices and may enjoy their freedom of speech and expression without any hindrance and subject to the outcome uh, the outside pro, uh, this prosecution the purpose was very pious so that the parliamentary privileges were the as the special rights immunities and exemption enjoyed by the two houses of the parliament their committees and their members so article 105 and 194 if you see they were of the constitution seek to sustain an environment where debate and deliberation can take place within the legislature the purpose is destroyed when a member is taken money to vote or speak in a particular manner which we have seen in mahua moitra's case also because of an act of bribery because bribery is not rendered immune under article 105 or 194 because a member engaging in bribery indulges in a criminal act because the prevention of corruption act there is a special statute prevention of corruption act which deals with the offenses of the corruption and if somebody takes a bribery for an act online. which is to be performed which is violative of the law in that case the supreme court said it is destroying the very essence of the parliament and the constitution and the and the rights given to the members of parliament and that is what the honorable supreme court says corruption and bribery by members of the legislatures erode probity in the public life and therefore bribery is not protected by the parliamentary privileges over to you right uh, destroying the democratic process is uh, what was said in court this morning uh, well uh, mr bharti will this judgment help uh, decriminalize uh, politics uh first thing is that the the only party president who was caught red handed uh, was mr bangaru rachman of uh, bjp so bjp has lots of things to answer but the, at the same time when we say the uh, the other cases where the judgment or the actions has been so quick in case uh, which uh, my uh, co panelist was referring to that without any inquiry and any uh, much uh, and uh, any any prosecution on side of uh, law or uh, only by the uh, lok sabha speaker that was so quick and fast that uh, there was no uh, even there is no uh, chance was given to be heard uh, by, uh, from the accused who was accused in that case so in these cases we have to see that uh, when we are referring uh, any parliamentary uh, definitely a, a parliamentary or uh, uh, parliamentary should be above of doing all these uh, uh, acts 
because whether is related to bribery and corruption but the corruption when you call about corruption there are laws like the mla act where these acts are amended purposefully amended to uh, to act on the opposition leaders that you we have seen in the past also so when you have the government which is only totally uh, seeing the corruption of the other uh, opposition leader and they uh, they are they are clean when they join the bjp so these kind of acts are when when these kind of uh, legislators are sitting in the in the same uh, parliament so what do you expect that what kind of uh, uh, white kind of transparency and uh, unbiased attitude will be uh, will, will be seen in the parliament so that has to come from the top so mr modi and the government has to first realize that if we are so strict so uh, uh, so, uh, so strict on the uh, corruption front then you have to act on that it's not that you you uh, bring all the corrupt people into your uh, party and 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 then um, and then either their uh, files are being destroyed or they are missing these kind of acts are in the uh, the people of this country are also watching you and seeing your seriousness what kind of uh, 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 seriousness you have in dealing with the corruption so this thing has to be dealt with and we and it's always better to have a good uh, uh legislature on uh, legislation on this uh, whether it's related to even to the parliamentarians uh, and their acts are above any suspicion and the, uh, we welcome these kind of steps but at the same time bjp government has to lot has lot to answer on this right uh, exactly uh, so let's uh, get uh, mr dubey uh, well uh, the judgment of the majority in narsimha rao which grants immunity to legislators has a grave danger and thus it's been overruled is what was being said in the supreme court so take us through uh, you know the issues and uh, what were the arguments uh, for and against uh, the the decision see the the first argument was those who were saying that the parliament privileges does not mean that accepting the bribe the argument was that the offense of accepting a bribe is complete at the time of acceptance regardless of performance because the purpose of the constitutional provision was to protect the legislative process integrity not shield individuals from the criminal proceedings arising out of a betrayal of electorate trust and that is what proposing the essential functions test the narrow interpretation of the provisions is stating that immunity should not extend to acts remotely connected to legislators then the the criminal liability should apply equally to legislators as to any other individual without the clock of immunity for acts outside their official functions and those who were supporting the sita soren's case there was one of the argument that the narsimha rao judgment highlighting the caution needed when considering overturning long standing precedents the 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 argument was that the concept of constitutional privilege and immunity was a crucial pillar of constitutional framework aimed at safeguarding legislators from executive influence and that is what one of the argument was that the historical evaluation of legislative immunity immunities emphasizing the need for legislators to be free from fear of prosecution to vote fearlessly but the honorable supreme court says that you have a right right to cast your vote freely also right to freedom of speech and expression but moment bribery is taken for performance of any act then the prevention of corruption will come act will come in play so that is what the parliamentary immunity or legislative immunity does not mean accepting bribe the gist of this matter because it destroys the very essence of the uh, the privilege yes